Hi everyone, this is Mrs. J. I'm doing a read aloud of Thunder Rolling in the Mountains by Scott O'Dell and Elizabeth Hall, and we're on chapter 3, page 13. The wind swirled high in the treetops. The one-armed general let go of his beard. My father unwrapped the light folds of his blanket. The general said, Tell me, chief of the Wallowa Nez Perce, one whose intelligence is praised by friends and enemies alike, tell me, do you believe that I have spoken to you before and speak to you now with two tongues? With one tongue only, my father said, and I too speak with one tongue. Believe me when I say that we do not wish to move to Lapwai. I believe you, Chief Joseph. So you must believe me. I say again to you and to your clan that you must leave Wallowa. My father thought hard. His mouth was closed and tight and his hands were pressed across his chest. He glanced at the snowy peaks, at the blue lake, and at the green meadows fading with the sun. You do not understand. Wallowa is my home, and you do not understand why. The general was not listening. He said something to one of his soldiers who smiled, but my father did not notice. I noticed, and I held my breath in fear. When I had lived on this earth for ten snows, my father said, in this beautiful place that surrounds us, I climbed that mountain. He paused and pointed it up to the mountain with both hands open, high up where I can look beyond in all directions. I made a bed on a stone. I had no water and no food. I closed my eyes. I put a pebble in my nose and a pebble in each ear to keep me awake. I floated far beyond the sky, far beyond this world. Five suns I lay there my stomach on the cold stone, my mouth burning with thirst. I began to wonder how many suns would rise before my guardian spirit came and spoke to me. The general was still not listening. My father went on. He was talking more to himself than to the general. I wondered if my guardian spirit would come, if he would leave me nameless and all alone because I was unworthy of being a man. But then, without a sound, out of a quiet night, he came. I could not see him. Whether he was young or old, I cannot say, but I clearly I heard him speak a name. I climbed down happy from the snow mountain. Other young men, my friends, had also gone to that sacred place and were given names. We chanted our names until the moon went down and the sun came up. I have many names, but thunder rolling in the mountains is the name that binds me forever to the land of wandering waters. I am tired of talk, the general said. I have heard enough talk. You and your people will leave Wallowa before thirty suns come and go. Tuhulu Sote was walking up and down, staring out from the folds of his blanket. He was a huge man with a fierce eye and a rumbling voice. Who are you to tell us what to do? He said to the general. You do not make these mountains. The spirit chief made the mountains. He made the streams and the meadows, the trees, the grass, the beasts that eat the grass, and the birds that weave it into nests. The spirit chief made everything. Who is this man that will tell us to leave our home, our mother, and go to a place that does not belong to us? I am that man, the general said. My father moved between them. I'm sure he feared that the hot words would end in a bad fight. Once, when the general first came to Lapwai, he fought to Hulu Sote, put chains on him, and locked him up in a soldier's jail. I cannot move my people to Lapwai now, my father said. The Snake River is flooding. We would need to cross from one shore to the other through torrents of water. Many of my people are women, children, and the old. I have thousands of cattle. Half of them would be swept away. The general pointed a glittering sword at my father. Listen, he shouted. I have heard enough excuses. Now I speak my last words. If you do not move your tribe from this place before thirty suns have risen and set, then I shall send soldiers with guns to drive you out. My father drew his blanket close about him. I hear your words, he said. I carry them to our people. In thirty sons we will be gone. There must be no blood. General Howard nodded his head. He did not smile, but there was a glint of pleasure in his eye. He motioned to a soldier. The soldier blew a trumpet and the band galloped off. My father watched them cross the meadow, splash through the stream, and swiftly disappear. While he watched them and said nothing, I saw that the redcoats scrambled out of the bushes. Swan Necklace was waiting with their horses. He got onto his own horse, and the three of them rode off. I knew where the redcoats were going. Swift as arrows, they would ride to the village and tell all that they had heard. They would say that Chief Joseph had given in to the one-armed general. They would say that Tuhulu Sote had stood up to the general. 
Every word he had said would be said again. The young warriors would listen to my father, for they loved him, but they would not obey him. They would never leave Wallowa. They would follow Tuhulu Sote to death if that's where it led them. This was good. The idea of being driven away by soldiers to a strange place far from my home I loved made wild thoughts flash through my mind. I saw myself riding into the soldiers' camp with a torch, setting fire to their tents. I saw myself take aim with my rifle and shoot a soldier from his horse. I saw another soldier running across the meadow, and I shot him too. 